To the Ephesians Chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus through God's will, to the holy ones who are in Ephesus, and faithful ones in union with Christ Jesus. May you have undeserved kindness and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in union with Christ, just as he chose us in union with him before the founding of the world, that we should be holy and without blemish before him in love. For he foreordained us to the adoption through Jesus Christ as sons to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, in praise of his glorious undeserved kindness, which he kindly conferred upon us by means of his loved one. By means of him we have the release by ransom through the blood of that one, yes, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his undeserved kindness. This he caused to abound toward us in all wisdom and good sense, in that he made known to us the sacred secret of his will. It is according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself for an administration at the full limit of the appointed times, namely, to gather all things together again in the Christ, the things in the heavens and the things on the earth. Yes, in him, in union with whom we were also assigned as heirs, in that we were foreordained according to the purpose of him who operates all things according to the way his will counsels, that we should serve for the praise of his glory, we who have been first to hope in the Christ. But you also hoped in him after you heard the word of truth, the good news about your salvation. By means of him also, after you believed, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is a token in advance of our inheritance for the purpose of releasing by a ransom God's own possession to his glorious praise. That is why I also, since I have heard of the faith you have in the Lord Jesus and toward all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you. I continue mentioning you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the accurate knowledge of him, the eyes of your heart having been enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he called you, what the glorious riches are which he holds as an inheritance for the holy ones, and what the surpassing greatness of his power is toward us believers. It is according to the operation of the mightiness of his strength with which he has operated in the case of the Christ when he raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above every government and authority and power and lordship and every name named, not only in this system of things, but also in that to come. He also subjected all things under his feet and made him head over all things to the congregation, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills up all things in all. Chapter 2 Furthermore, it is you God made alive, though you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you at one time walked according to the system of things of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, the spirit that now operates in the sons of disobedience. Yes, among them we all at one time conducted ourselves in harmony with the desires of our flesh, doing the things willed by the flesh and the thoughts, and we were naturally children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us, made us alive together with the Christ, even when we were dead in trespasses. By undeserved kindness you have been saved. And he raised us up together and seated us together in the heavenly places in union with Christ Jesus, that in the coming systems of things there might be demonstrated the surpassing riches of his undeserved kindness in his graciousness toward us in union with Christ Jesus. By this undeserved kindness, indeed, you have been saved through faith, and this not owing to you, it is God's gift. 
No, it is not owing to works, in order that no man should have ground for boasting. For we are a product of his work, and were created in union with Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance for us to walk in them. Therefore keep bearing in mind that formerly you were people of the nations as to flesh. Uncircumcision you were called, by that which is called circumcision, made in the flesh with hands, that you were at that particular time without Christ, alienated from the state of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of the promise, and you had no hope, and were without God in the world. But now, in union with Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have come to be near by the blood of the Christ. For he is our peace, he who made the two parties one, and destroyed the wall in between that fenced them off. By means of his flesh he abolished the enmity, the law of commandments consisting in decrees, that he might create the two peoples in union with himself into one new man, and make peace, and that he might fully reconcile both peoples in one body to God through the torture stake, because he had killed off the enmity by means of himself. And he came and declared the good news of peace to you, the ones far off, and peace to those near, because through him we, both peoples, have the approach to the Father by one Spirit. Certainly, therefore, you are no longer strangers and alien residents, but you are fellow citizens of the Holy Ones, and are members of the household of God, and you have been built up upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, while Christ Jesus himself is the foundation cornerstone. In union with him, the whole building, being harmoniously joined together, is growing into a holy temple for Jehovah. In union with him, you too are being built up together into a place for God to inhabit by spirit. Chapter 3 On account of this, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus in behalf of you, the people of the nations, if really you have heard about the stewardship of the undeserved kindness of God that was given me with you in view, that by way of a revelation the sacred secret was made known to me, just as I wrote previously in brief. In the face of this, you, when you read this, can realize the comprehension I have in the sacred secret of the Christ. In other generations this secret was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by Spirit. Namely, that people of the nation should be joint heirs and fellow members of the body, and partakers with us of the promise in union with Christ Jesus through the good news. I became a minister of this according to the free gift of the undeserved kindness of God that was given me according to the way his power operates. To me, a man less than the least of all holy ones, this undeserved kindness was given, that I should declare to the nations the good news about the unfathomable riches of the Christ, and should make men see how the sacred secret is administered, which has from the indefinite past been hidden in God, who created all things. This was to the end, that now to the governments and the authorities and the heavenly places, there might be made known through the congregation the greatly diversified wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose that he formed in connection with the Christ, Jesus our Lord, by means of whom we have this freeness of speech and an approach with confidence through our faith in him. Wherefore I ask you not to give up on account of these tribulations of mine in your behalf, for these mean glory for you. On account of this I bend my knees to the Father, to whom every family in heaven and on earth owes its name, to the end that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be made mighty in the man you are inside with power through his Spirit, to have the Christ dwell through your faith in your hearts with love, that you may be rooted and established on the foundation in order that you may be thoroughly able to grasp mentally with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth 
and to know the love of the Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness that God gives. Now to the one who can, according to his power which is operating in us, do more than superabundantly beyond all the things we ask or conceive. To him be the glory, by means of the congregation, and by means of Christ Jesus, to all generations for ever and ever. Amen. Chapter 4 I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, entreat you to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with complete lowliness of mind and mildness, with long-suffering, putting up with one another in love, earnestly endeavouring to observe the oneness of the Spirit in the uniting bond of peace. One body there is, and one Spirit, even as you were called in the one hope to which you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all persons, who is over all and through all and in all. Now to each one of us undeserved kindness was given according to how the Christ measured out the free gift. Wherefore he says, when he ascended on high, he carried away captives, he gave gifts in men. Now the expression, he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower regions, that is, the earth? The very one that descended is also the one that ascended far above all the heavens, that he might give fullness to all things. And he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelizers, some as shepherds and teachers, with a view to the readjustment of the holy ones, for ministerial work, for the building up of the body of the Christ, until we all attain to the oneness in the faith and in the accurate knowledge of the Son of God, to a full-grown man, to the measure of stature that belongs to the fullness of the Christ, in order that we should no longer be babes, tossed about as by waves, and carried hither and thither by every wind of teaching, by means of the trickery of men, by means of cunning in contriving error. But speaking the truth, let us by love grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. From him all the body, by being harmoniously joined together and being made to cooperate through every joint that gives what is needed, according to the functioning of each respective member in due measure, makes for the growth of the body, for the building up of itself in love. This, therefore, I say and bear witness to in the Lord, that you no longer go on walking just as the nations also walk in the unprofitableness of their minds, while they are in darkness mentally and alienated from the life that belongs to God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the insensibility of their hearts. Having come to be past all moral sense, they gave themselves over to loose conduct, to work uncleanness of every sort with greediness. But you did not learn the Christ to be so, provided, indeed, that you heard him and were taught by means of him, just as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old personality, which conforms to your former course of conduct, and which is being corrupted according to his deceptive desires, but that you should be made new in the force actuating your mind, and should put on the new personality, which was created according to God's will, in true righteousness and loyalty. Wherefore, now that you have put away falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, because we are members belonging to one another. Be wrathful, and yet do not sin. Let the sun not set with you in a provoked state, neither allow place for the devil. Let the stealer steal no more, but rather let him do hard work, doing with his hands what is good work that he may have something to distribute to someone in need. 
Let a rotten saying not proceed out of your mouth. But whatever saying is good for building up as the need may be, that it may impart what is favorable to the hearers. Also, do not be grieving God's Holy Spirit with which you have been sealed for a day of releasing by ransom. Let all malicious bitterness and anger and wrath and screaming and abusive speech be taken away from you along with all badness. But become kind to one another, tenderly compassionate, freely forgiving one another, just as God, also by Christ, freely forgave you. Chapter 5 Therefore, become imitators of God as beloved children, and go on walking in love, just as the Christ also loved you and delivered himself up for you as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling odor. Let fornication and uncleanness of every sort or greediness not even be mentioned among you, just as it befits holy people. Neither shameful conduct, nor foolish talking, nor obscene jesting, things which are not becoming, but rather the giving of thanks. For you know this, recognizing it for yourselves, that no fornicator, or unclean person, or greedy person, which means being an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of the Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with empty words, for because of the aforesaid things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but you are now light in connection with the Lord. Go on walking as children of light, for the fruitage of the light consists of every sort of goodness and righteousness and truth. Keep on making sure of what is acceptable to the Lord, and quit sharing with them in the unfruitful works that belong to the darkness, but rather even be reproving them. For the things that take place in secret by them, it is shameful even to relate. Now all the things that are being reproved are made manifest by the light, for everything that is being made manifest is light. Wherefore he says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and the Christ will shine upon you. So keep strict watch that how you walk is not as unwise, but as wise persons, buying out the opportune time for yourselves, because the days are wicked. On this account, cease becoming unreasonable, but go on perceiving what the will of Jehovah is. Also, do not be getting drunk with wine in which there is debauchery, but keep getting filled with spirit, speaking to yourselves with psalms and praises to God and spiritual songs, singing and accompanying yourselves with music in your hearts to Jehovah, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks always for all things to our God and Father. Be in subjection to one another in fear of Christ, let wives be in subjection to their husbands as to the Lord, because a husband is head of his wife, as the Christ also is head of the congregation, he being a saviour of this body. In fact, as the congregation is in subjection to the Christ, so let wives also be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, continue loving your wives, just as the Christ also loved the congregation and delivered up himself for it that he might sanctify it, cleansing it with the bath of water by means of the word, that he might present the congregation to himself in its splendor, not having a spot or a wrinkle or any of such things, but that it should be holy and without blemish. In this way, husbands ought to be loving their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no man ever hated his own flesh, but he feeds and cherishes it, as the Christ also does the congregation, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and his mother, and he will stick to his wife, 
and the two will become one flesh. This sacred secret is great. Now I am speaking with respect to Christ and the congregation. Nevertheless, also let each one of you individually so love his wife as he does himself. On the other hand, the wife should have deep respect for her husband. Chapter 6 Children, be obedient to your parents in union with the Lord, for this is righteous. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first command with a promise, that it may go well with you, and you may endure a long time on the earth. And you, fathers, do not be irritating your children, but go on bringing them up in the discipline and mental regulating of Jehovah. You slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters in a fleshly sense, with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your hearts as to the Christ, not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as Christ's slaves, doing the will of God whole souled. Be slaves with good inclinations as to Jehovah, and not to men. For you know that each one, whatever good he may do, will receive this back from Jehovah, whether he be slave or free man. Also you masters, keep doing the same things to them, letting up on the threatening, for you know that the master of both them and you is in the heavens, and there is no partiality with him. Finally, go on acquiring power in the Lord and in the mightiness of his strength. Put on the complete suit of armor from God that you may be able to stand firm against the machinations of the devil. Because we have a wrestling not against blood and flesh, but against the governments, against the authorities, against the world rulers of this darkness, against the wicked spirit forces in the heavenly places. On this account, take up the complete suit of armor from God that you may be able to resist in the wicked day and, after you have done all things thoroughly, to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, with your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and with your feet shod with the equipment of the good news of peace. Above all things, take up the large shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the wicked one's burning missiles. Also, accept the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, that is, God's word, while with every form of prayer and supplication you carry on prayer on every occasion in spirit. And to that end keep awake with all constancy and with supplication in behalf of all the holy ones. Also for me, that ability to speak may be given me with the opening of my mouth, with freeness of speech to make known the sacred secret of the good news for which I am acting as an ambassador in chains, that I may speak in connection with it with boldness as I ought to speak. Now in order that you may also know about my affairs, as to how I am doing, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know of the things having to do with us, and that he may comfort your hearts. May the brothers have peace and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May the undeserved kindness be with all those loving our Lord Jesus Christ in incorruptness.